Hello, I'm Stephanie Kim, coming to you from the LG Digital Studio at the Georgetown University School of Continuing Studies. In focus today, the future of higher education. I'm joined by Dr. Brian Alexander, Senior Scholar at the Center for New Design and Learning and Scholarship here at Georgetown University. He's also the author of a new book, Academia Next, The Futures of Higher Education. Welcome, Brian. Thank you. Welcome. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, well, it's a pleasure to have you. Thanks. So, Brian, you call yourself a futurist in higher education. Correct. What exactly does that mean? What does your work entail? Well, a futurist helps people think more carefully, more creatively, and more realistically about the future. And so I do this with higher education. And that means, in part, I consult with colleges, universities, governments, nonprofits, and businesses. And I also make a lot of media. I do a weekly video conference, I publish monthly trends analysis, and I write books, chapters, uh, articles, all kinds of stuff, trying to help people in higher education and adjacent to higher education think more creatively, more effectively about what's to come. Hmm. So, I mean, just thinking about these trends that you write about, what would you say are the most important ones that colleges and universities can anticipate? There are several. In fact, I have a map of about 90, so let me just hit a couple of <laughs> the major ones. And one of them is demographics, where the population is getting older and we're generating fewer and fewer younger people, which has all kinds of impacts on how we think about enrollment in traditional age undergraduate education. There are developments in technology, which are both daunting and very exciting. We think about, for example, the huge open revolution where people have access to more open content from teaching the scholarship. But there's also new technologies, everything from artificial intelligence to the mixture of virtual reality and augmented reality, which some call extended reality. And on top of that, we have changes in economics. So as our economy keeps moving away from manufacturing and towards service, that means higher education has to prepare students for a different labor force. On top of that, we have to worry about political and cultural tensions as there's more and more anxiety about higher education from everything from Republicans worried about politics to many, many people worried about student debt. I mean, taken together, we also have the additional problem that higher education is increasingly running into financial sustainability problems. I, I put all these together and sometimes I call it crunch time for higher education because there is so much pressure. And yet we have so much opportunity, I mean, in a sense, this is the best time in human history to be a learner, but it's one of the weirdest times to be a university. Hmm. Wow, well, the future sounds incredibly complex and even mm -hmm. volatile. Yes. So what can higher education professionals do to prepare for this? They can do a few things. Uh, one of them is to cultivate a futures strategy or stance. So they take the future seriously, and that involves doing everything from horizon scanning to trends analysis to creating scenarios to simply doing research and having a mindset that the future just might be different than the present, which is difficult for some people to do. A second is to listen to students, especially the younger ones, because in many ways that's why we're here in higher education, but also they come from a slightly different world sociologically and we don't empower them enough in many places. And a third is to just work outside the box, work with as many colleagues and co-conspirators as possible across domains. So to work with people from other countries, to work with people in the nonprofit space, to work with different parts of higher education from community colleges to state schools, to try to craft a new world of higher education. All of that is, in a sense, to think in terms of science fiction. You know, to imagine a world where things are different and challenging, but with enough intelligence and enough creativity, we can succeed. So, one last question for you, Brian. Please. What inspired you to write this book? Well, quite a few things. Uh, one of them was teaching and just looking at my students and trying to imagine ways that universities and colleges could better meet their needs in the world that changes. Partly, it was working with so many different colleges and universities, I mean hundreds of them, trying to think about where they were going to be going. Partly, it was my hope in the digital revolution uh, and the promises and potentials that it affords. And partly, it was just thinking about the 21st century being an incredibly challenging place and how of all sectors of society, from business to the military, the government, higher education is this extraordinary actor stuffed, filled with intellectual firepower, so much creativity, and so much heart, so much care. I wanted to see how this sector could best thrive in the rest of the century. Well, some wonderful words to part with. 
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's been a pleasure. It's been my pleasure. And I very much look forward to reading the book, um, as should everyone out there. And thank you, everyone out there, for watching. Stay tuned for more from the LG Digital Studio at Georgetown SCS.